go ahead and get her started, let her idle up, let the air fill up. And it'll also, I guess that's already on, but get this going. Turn on the four <laughs> Turn the four ways on. Check that out. Hey, they, they cleaned her up. I can tell it's clean. Or it's from uh, when we got it cleaned up. Because when they're working on this, we told them, you know, you gotta do under undercarriage. So that's probably from the truck wash when we did it. It ain't no flake. Hey, this, this is good. Good to see the blinking. Love it. Excited since we work. Uh, I believe today is January the 3rd. We haven't taken a load since uh, December the 20th, so uh, oh, yeah. Love you. I love you too. Alright. Bye back. Alright. Hey, we dropped this this thing off here and took our car home that way you know the fleet owner doesn't have to worry about putting us in a hotel i mean there's eventually it'll probably happen to where the truck's in some freight liner and we're far from home and uh we'll have to stay in some hotel and rough it but uh this was pretty convenient made life a lot easier pretty excited though I i'm ready for a load i'm hope i'm really hopeful it works i'm Pretty confident these guys here at Lima Freightliner got her done. Yeah, I hope so. We finally got the truck back on Monday, which we were excited about because uh, the um, the turn signal was working, everything was working good, so we were so excited. So, uh, so we uh, we had a very interesting week. Um, we got a load kind of last minute it kind of felt like it um on sunday when we were trying to decide if we were uh right before i was about ready to go to bed um so we had a load that was picking up on monday and uh it was in new york so we would have to leave on sunday uh to head towards that direction i think the deadhead was like 500 and some miles or something um but anyways uh, it just so happens to be in the middle of a bunch of bad winter weather and so um, it was gonna be up near the like Niagara Falls area. That's an area that we were gonna go by um, and go past that. And just so happens that there was weather advisories for that area and it was gonna be 40 mile per hour, was it gusts yeah. or winds? Gusts wind. Yeah. Um, and uh, eight to 12 inches of snow. So we actually got, uh, I well I would call it stuck as in like, you I know. Think they're calling for 18 to 20 inches in that area. 18, 18 to 20? Yeah, total accumulation. Oh, well, dang. Well, you got several states that was getting a winter storm, so the current place we was at got a lot of storm. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. So, um, so Sunday, thankfully, during Derek's shift while I was sleeping, he was able to find a rest area that we parked at. And we were a little nervous because it was on the end, like the first one you come to. So um, when he was sleeping, I stayed in the front, obviously. Uh, so I was awake during my shift and I kept an eye out and he told me he's like if anybody starts sliding into us yell really loud for me to sit up because you know in case it like crushed like so Derek would have a chance maybe to live um, if something major happened like that there's always stuff to worry about when you're on the road especially with bad weather uh, so we actually called um, our carrier and we asked them we we're supposed to pick up Monday morning uh, we asked him if they could push it back a day because of how bad the weather was it wasn't supposed to stop uh, snowing in that area until um, I think 7 or 8 p.m. on Monday and since we were supposed to pick up Monday morning like it was it was just really bad we got a lot of footage too of the cats playing with the snow uh, that was coming on the windshield uh, which was really awesome and actually the whole windshield was pure ice and even the the light post that was beside us I, I kind of zoomed in and I got there was like icicles hanging from it and it was just completely it was it was really bad <laughs> so um, they completely understood that the shipper actually was very nice and everything too and, and they were totally okay with that happening so um, we actually picked it up on Tuesday and it had four different drops um, so 
the first one was in uh, New York. We were able to make that drop. Um, and it was kind of close to their closing time too. And it was in a, a shipper area where we couldn't record, which I was kind of sad because they had really cool icicles uh, that were hanging off their air conditioning and, and just like all the windows and all that stuff. There's still some plows out. I missed that one. I don't know if you guys can kind of see. There's some awesome hills going on right now. Um, we're actually in uh, Virginia currently. Uh, we just dropped off at our second location. So we're heading uh, to Tennessee for our third and our fourth drop, which will happen tomorrow. Uh, today is Wednesday. Uh, so it pushed everything back and we were kind of sad because we actually had two more loads that were lined up already after that. Um, Derek did a good job of combining everything. And um, so we had to cancel them uh, just to make sure that we, you know, obviously make this a priority. This one was the, the, the load that we got good mileage pay and everything for too. So we do have another load after this. Um, but yeah, the last two drops are going to be tomorrow on Thursday morning. So the month of January is, is our best January we've ever done. Uh, we almost did 30,000. We had a 10% chance. There was a load that would just get us over slightly the 30,000 mark. I tried for it straight off the board and uh, we... We some, didn't get it. Nope, we didn't get it. We had like a 10% chance or something like that. I don't know. But <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. I think we're going to end slightly over $25,000 for the month. And uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure how things are going to go in February, but I'm optimistic that we'll at least do the fleet owner's minimum goal, you know, for this truck. And that's $22,000. So we'll see. We do have one load lined up for Monday, which is still January. Mm -hmm. I wanted something that was in a hot area. So we took this load. It picks up Monday, drops Monday, the last day of January. So that way... Uh, we'd be in a better position for the beginning of February in hopes that maybe we can get both uh, bonuses next time. Yeah, it's since a very it's gonna small be a short, load, but... Short month, but... Yeah. We'll but see what happens. Yeah. Whenever it's a new year, I I love setting goals, and uh, it seems like the beginning of the year, just like most people, I, I I'm more hopeful at that point because it's like a reset. It's like all right, a new beginning, and um, I like to compete with myself. I like to beat my personal records, so I'm hopeful that I can make more money this year and do better. Just you know, always try to progress and to uh, outperform yourself one way or another. And this was the year I was hoping to do that with uh, expediting. Also, I was hoping that we could bring back the Ford F-350. And uh, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I wanted to do it. And I was trying to figure out ways to make it as cheap as possible and make it fun. Or to uh, make sure that it's fully reliable just in case we sell it. We really didn't get a lot of videos in February. So it was just going from January to March pretty much. And uh, we are doing really good January, February, and March. I wanna say those in 2022 is our best months we've ever had for January, February, March. We were actually gonna gross a little bit above $34,000 to the truck in uh, March, but the truck ended up having computer issues again. Um, I can't remember what exactly it was, but it was some kind of uh, recall. It was just acting weird. It was like uh, the windshield wipers would start to move without turning them on. So the blinkers would stop working. The voltage meter on the gauge cluster wasn't reading correctly. It was reading low when it was actually normal. I originally thought that maybe the alternator wasn't working too too good and that's why everything was acting up. So we turned around and we went to a Loves and we had it tested at a Loves and they uh, checked out the alternator and the uh, alternator uh, checked out good. And he, uh, the mechanic said, it's your sand board. So I 
about crap my pants because that's what was just replaced. After a while of driving the truck in its current state, um, I uh, pulled over before it got dark outside and I did a, a check and um, sure enough, um, the headlights weren't working anymore. The fog lights were still working. And so I drove until I could find a safe place to park overnight and uh, we stopped driving for the day. Before I get too far, from dealing with the weather in January and February and March, going through all these dang storms, I, um, I told myself if I was going to drive anymore, I wanted to drive my own truck. I wanted me and Cinnamon to get our own truck. And the reason is, is because I want to be able to have downtime because of weather and not feel bad about not making the owner any money. I didn't want to have the pressure on my shoulders of um, making someone else worry because I wasn't running their truck. Um, our fleet owners never put pressure on us. It was just something I put on myself and I didn't like it. Whenever we had their trucks, when we drove them, we treated it as if it was our own business because I feel like one truck could take out their whole company. And so I was tr we were trying really hard to uh, make sure that we could bring in a profit and that we had little to no downtime as much as possible. But after dealing with the weather, and I have to admit that before we got into expediting, I wanted to get my own expediting truck so that way we were, you know, our own boss. When you're, you're a contractor in these trucks, you are your own boss, but I wanted to not have to worry about a fleet owner. Basically, um, just like I just said, I don't want the pressure put on my own shoulders from worrying about them not making any money. I just wanted to worry about, you know, getting our bills paid and just taking care of ourselves, not, you know, other people, affect other people. And I feel like there's just more room to grow. I, I, throughout my life, I like to try to advance myself one way or another. If I feel like I can't really grow too much financially, I feel like I'm held still and I just can't stand it. I just want to find a different path one way or another to feel like I can grow. And I do like the idea of growing a fleet. I originally reached out to another fleet owner that has a ton of expediting trucks and they did have one that they uh, presented to me. It was just a lot of money. I, I want to say it was $148,000 they wanted for the truck and they wanted $20,000 down and we can make payments to them but with interest and the monthly payments were going to be $4,800 a month. It was a three axle truck with a bathroom on it so it was intriguing it was going to have around 750,000 miles on it when we got it wasn't real excited about it but it was a way to get our own truck and then i talked to our fleet owners i previously talked to them and um you know try to fill them out you know time and time again you know about their trucks you know and when they'd be willing to sell and they never seemed to budge and then i let them know that i was actually looking to uh, get our own truck so then they considered selling their oldest truck, which is a 2016 and at the time had around, you know, 700 and some thousand miles. So it was pretty much like the one I was looking at, except for it had no bathroom, slightly smaller sleeper. It was a two axle truck, so it couldn't handle as much weight. And actually this, this truck in their fleet can handle the least amount of freight. So the three axle truck that we was driving for them could handle roughly around 16,000 to 19,000 pounds. I really can't remember at this point, but it was up there. And uh, the truck that they're offering to us could handle up to 4,000 pounds of freight. And they're willing to work with us. They said that they would do $30,000 for this truck. I was completely interested in it. It was uh, the best option I felt because if you compare the two truck prices and the miles, and I think they were the same years even, I just felt like it was the, the best option to go. Um, either truck, you could have breakdowns. You just don't know what you're going to get. And we personally knew Aaron and David, and I felt really confident in their truck. You know, they've, they've always talked about it. it. It would break down frequently here and there, but it was mostly with the TCU, APU kind of thing. Nothing serious. And with an expediting truck, they don't take on the weight as like a semi truck would. And so I feel like the wear and tear on these expediting trucks is uh, less severe as if you would have a semi truck. 
I hear of a lot of semi trucks going well over a million miles. So I felt pretty good about this. I felt like if we could just get 150,000 miles out of this truck, I felt like $30,000 was well worth it. And since inflation's happening and the rise of fuel costs, this would be our best option. We we're able to make arrangements to get this truck in April and our payments would only be $2,500 a month. And so I thought, wow, this is, this is actually happening. This is amazing. I can't believe this is going to happen. And it just, I'm filled with hope again. Aw, oh, look at that smirk. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Two and a half years later, huh? Has it really been that long? It has to be because I think it's almost three years. I think we were doing expediting that long, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we've almost been doing expediting for three years, so this sucker's been sitting a very long time. Probably three years and end of July. Yeah, and you know, it's almost mid April right now. July 16th was our last hot shot load. That's crazy. 2019. So this thing, we brought it here end of December. It was really slow on getting parts because, yeah, go figure everything, you know. Sometimes it's hard to get the batteries out of the <laughs> Just gonna move. <laughs> We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Yeah. I put on the horn and put my lights on and everything. You're good on my side. Ten-year anniversary today, and this is what we're doing. He's letting me get a bunch of trees. I'm so excited. good yeah all right so it looks like it's still leaking underneath there we went roughly 50 miles uh, we're out of petrol now and uh, it doesn't look good to me I don't like it so I'm gonna talk to cinnamon and we'll see what happens I got a feeling we're gonna be ended up taking it to uh, another shop how excited are you? I'm real excited. And <laughs> my headset was sitting on the C-Link, or ELD as they call it. Oh, okay. But Cause we didn't know where it was. Yeah, I totally don't remember seeing it there. Do you want to take it and show them underneath and stuff? So it looks like... So they welded the top part, but it looks like they... Oh. Yeah, they spray painted the whole back piece, so I don't know if the, there was more than just uh, uh, the top part they welded, but they went ahead and spray painted the back so it looks like a brand new axle, which, you know, that's pretty funny, there's a, the plug. But look at that sucker shine. That thing shines better than my Firebird. But uh, yeah, somewhere towards the top there, there was like a crack, and it was just leaking fluid all over. Uh, we had it checked out. We had it checked out over in Defiance at the Volvo, and they couldn't figure out where it was leaking from. They had ideas. They just refilled it and gave it back to us, and said to maybe schedule an appointment in a week so they could check it out again. And I didn't like that idea, and so. Have a bad. 
Um, we ended up uh, coming here at one point at Ed's. So we ended up coming back to Ed's at one point. I think we went here first before we took it over to Volvo. And the guy I originally talked to said that they couldn't weld on it and they would have to uh, order a shelve and axle. So we said, okay, just go ahead and do that because uh, Defiant said they couldn't uh, weld on it either. So he's like, well, there's no more options. And uh, it's going to cost, I think the dude said, probably $4,800. I don't know. And so that's what we is depending on. I don't know if it's been a week or two, but we just kind of keeping an eye on things. And I decided my gut told me to bring it back here and uh, uh, have them check it out again. And the one guy I originally talked to no longer works here anymore. I don't know why. And it turns out he didn't even order that shelf and axle. So we're, uh, yeah, so good thing I brought it back and they actually were able to weld it. That, that's just exciting that they're able to do it. So we're able to continue trying to make money out there and uh, we're going to, <laughs> tonight we're gonna leave. Since we don't have any loads right now, we're already down. Uh, the APU needs like a new gasket somewhere and uh, they had we had one ordered in Southern Indiana towards Louisville there at Carrier and uh, tomorrow morning they're going to go ahead and uh, get the truck in and look at the APU try to change that out and hopefully that's all it is we just it's been leaking oil and uh, hopefully we can get that taken care of so everything's running good I think after this the only thing we're going to worry about is eventually getting the truck back to the freight liner in Columbus for the body shop to work on it so there's a lot of videos that we haven't posted that I did share little video clips in this video and I you know wanted to recap or whatever I wanted to reshow some of the stuff that's just happened throughout the year to kind of like memories this is what we've been through this is where we came from this is where we're at now type of deal and uh, we've come a long ways and there's a lot of little things that I had to fix replace on the, the freight liner and um, like the alternator got the alternator fixed uh oh well, when we had some downtime cinnamon you know did work on the garden a tiny bit this year not as much as she would like uh, i built a uh, projector screen behind her shed on our shed you can see that in some video clips when the barn's being taken down and whatnot it, it's pretty cool it's about 12 feet tall by i want to say 24 foot wide it's pretty fun we haven't used it that many times uh we had some things come up this year and it we just uh, avoided doing watching it you know we did have some weekends where we got to uh, have friends over and family and uh, watch some movies so that was really fun and then um, it was really cool to uh, get the f-350 running again um, I really don't know what I want to do yet um, part of me wants to get out of debt extremely fast and um, so I'm considering like I did talk to somebody about selling this for forty two thousand dollars um, something is only worth something if somebody will be willing to pay for that. So right now, I don't know what the value is, but for me right now, my value is $42,000. It's worth that to me because I'm worth, it's, I'm not wanting to give that up yet below 42000 So that's why I, I feel it's valued at that. We still have use for it. You know, we still, we've used it a lot since we have it going. So that's, um, one thing too. But a part of me is half tempted to just sell it cheap just to lower our personal debt to get out of debt faster because I, I don't know, like I said in this video, I like to progress. I like to, you know, try to better myself financially. I try, I like to grow, you know what I mean? I just can't sit still and do the same thing. I. I, I don't know. I really enjoy growing a business or trying to just get better and better at something or um, try to make more money. It's all the same to me. It's it's entertaining. It's fun. It gives me something to look forward to. And um, we thought about doing uh, a fleet and expediting. We talked about it and uh, we really don't feel good about it. it 
something about you know the high fuel prices and you don't know what team you're going to get in your truck you know and it, it's such a gamble and then even if we got a brand new truck you're going to have downtime with uh little things that they just can't figure out it's we've seen many different examples and yeah it's just i don't know I don't want to have a truck that's breaking down on a team either. I would feel really bad. It'd, you know, it'd bring the stress levels up, worrying about that team financially, you know, being stuck with us. And then, you know, are they happy? And I don't want to worry about that. Or if they get hurt in the truck, I, that would make me sick. So we're not going to be fleet owners like I we thought about doing. Um, I'm looking at other businesses, other opportunities. Um, might do it in 2023, I'm not really sure. It might not even happen, but I, I got like a fire burning inside me right now and I'm really looking into something. I'm not ready to share that just because if you share your dreams with people, people are usually dream killers as I like to call them. Um, I didn't share, you know, buying this truck with uh, the audience for reasons because there's a lot of haters out there that will put it down. After we got the truck, there's people saying that we're going to fail. So, yeah, hold your dreams tight to you and be passionate, you know, don't give up. You just got to persevere and just keep moving forward and just keep trying, you know. But it's got to be your passion, too. It really helps out a lot. I really enjoy trucking, but there's just so much going on. It's uh, ruining it. I'm going to do it as long as I can. You know, you got the government shutdowns, you got the high fuel costs, you got inflation, and then you got the government trying to get rid of combustion engines. And um, it's all happening fast. And then there's automation. So even if we could stay in trucking, they're, they're trying to go to automated trucks. So it's like, I don't have a choice. I gotta, I gotta look for something as a career, you know, or to put money on the table, you know. At least that's how I'm, I'm looking at it, you know, I can't just go about it like, you know, everything's going to be fine. I'm being well guarded of uh, yeah, our future. I feel like you got to be well aware of what's going on right now. There's a lot of changes being made. So we'll see what happens. You know, it sounds pretty negative, but it's the truth, you know. But, oh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. The barn's gone now, you know. I didn't want to dump money into the barn and fix it when we didn't have money. You know, I was willing to do that with a pickup truck because we could actually use it and, uh, or have the option of selling it. It's pretty hard to sell if it's not running, but at least we have that option now. And uh, this actually helps our property value, you know, not having a barn that's falling apart. There was a big pile of junk over there and we had that taken care of too. So, Improving the property, I'm trying to do that as well. So 2023, not sure what's gonna happen. I have some goals. I'm hoping to make some big changes. I said that in 2022 about, you know, expecting some big things to happen. And uh, we, we got out of the fleet owner's truck. We got that truck running. And then we got our own expediting truck. And we brought back um, Truck and Travel LLC. So we never went bankrupt. We just, it was sitting idle and we brought it back. I don't, it's really weird to think that, you know, we're doing so bad and uh, the trucking industry and we didn't go bankrupt, you know. It, it's just, I don't know. A lot of people told us we should have, but whatever, you know. Maybe we would have been better off financially doing that, but it's just, I don't know. It was our responsibility. Those were our debts. So that's why we took care of them. And, uh, yep. Yeah. Well, guys, new or old to the channel, I appreciate you guys just hanging out with us, following our journey, and just going down the road with us. It uh, means a lot to us. We wish you a happy new year, and uh, God bless you guys.